One minute, each speaker. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chu, members. Uh, Greg Cook representing Healthy Smiles of Los Angeles. I've appeared before this committee before. I listened uh, intently with Dr. Kumar's comments. I'm really concerned that I didn't hear the word elderly at any time. And I do believe that the department needs to be paying great attention to those people, especially those who are in assisted living facilities, getting appropriate preventive and, and, and uh, uh, appropriate care for the dental care. This is a critical part of the population. They are being underserved today. I'm pleased that the committee is focusing on this issue, and I look forward to working with you and Dr. Kumar in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Brianna Pittman with the California Dental Association. Um, Mr. Chair, as you said, Dr. Kumar's arrival in California was very highly anticipated. So I just want to say that we are very pleased to be um, participating on the work groups and task force that um, Dr. Kumar has brought together, are very pleased with the progress that's being made, and look forward to um, seeing his plan in full and working um, with the Department of Public Health and the legislature on implementing those changes. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Dressler with the Children's Partnership. Also excited about Dr. Kumar's um, entry onto the scene here and just want to associate myself with everything else that Brianna just said. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Uh, thank you. We're going to uh, go a little bit out of order. I, I note the arrival of uh, Director Kent and Ms. Cantwell are here. Ms. Kumar, why don't you stay with us? Oh, I'm sorry. Questions from the committee? I, I just want to say I know you have recently come to state government, and I share the concern of the chairman as well as a broader community around the issues that we've heard around Dentical and uh, hoping that you can address it as quickly as possible. We're looking forward to further reports. I'm not going to ask questions today around audits or uh, the numbers that uh, we've been heard except to simply just chime in and say uh, we're very eager to, to hear relatively soon what progress you're making in that area. Thank you. We will hear the – thank you, Mr. Chu. We will hear the stakeholder proposal, but I would like to note the arrival of our, our director. Ms. Kent is here. And, and Ms. Cantwell, I'd like to move to uh, – and Mr. Kumar is here. I'd like to move to issue uh, number 16, oversight, oral health, and dental care. Continue the conversation. Uh, for me, again, the theme is access. Uh, Ms. Kumar, if you like, you can address the question about – um, supporting uh, the elderly and others who need support. And welcome uh, Director Kent and Ms. Cantwell to come forward. Uh, thank you uh, to all of our other pre presenters. Welcome. Thank you. As you know, we always uh, prefer just a high-level overview uh, of, of the topics, and we are always happy to have you here in the Great. committee. When you are ready, we are ready. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, Jennifer Kent, uh, Director for the Department of Healthcare Services, and um, we are pleased to come and participate um, in the second conversation that this committee is having on Dentical and the services that we're providing. Um, the CSA released an audit um, shortly after I was appointed director last year, and I think um, we said at the time, and we continue to say that the audit raised a number of both um, good questions as well as problems that needed uh, attention, and so what we, I think, are pleased to sit here in front of you today and to discuss um, in further detail is progress that we've been making both um, at the Department of Healthcare Services but also in partnership with the Department of Public Health. Um, first and foremost, um, we have done some targeted activities within our department to address the audit findings. We agreed with 23 out of 24 of the CSA audit recommendations. We have been providing um, regular updates as um, required under the CSA terms. And so I think that there's a six month progress that we have um, submitted to them and then there's a report that will be done at a year. The um, outreach that we did um, last summer, I believe, um, we did a targeted mailing to families with small children to both highlight the fact that the benefit actually existed as well as encourage um, parents for how they could um, schedule appointments for their children. We saw definitely an uptick in utilization just in that one kind of outreach effort. I think that there are a lot of other um, activities that are underway. We've been working with our vendor, um, which is Delta Dental, on provider outreach. We have been looking at the provider application. The legislature um, 
um, restored um, the 10% reduction that had been applied in prior budget reductions. And so we implemented that. We submitted and got state approval to um, restore those rates. Um, so there have been um, notable things that we have done. And then I think the most notable thing, and Mary should certainly talk about it because she was the point and um, main negotiator was the securing of $750 million in our 1115 waiver that was negotiated at the end of last year. There is a specific um, component in there called the Dental Transfer Dental Transformation Initiative, or DTI, if you want to use the lingo. Um, we are just starting the work on that, and that um, infusion of resources as well as the targeted kind of interventions over the next five years are really what we think will be um, quite a significant both investment and demonstration for how we intend to improve the program. And speaking really candidly that when we were negotiating the waiver with the federal government, we had a lot of things that fell out of the waiver that we could not fund. And the one thing that we, at least in um, in all of our discussions, we never even blinked on, we need to keep dental in at all costs. And I think that that indicates both our personal interest in maintaining the investment and improving the program and the services, but also um, we really um, feel it's um, going to show for the federal government um, what some targeted investments can do that would um, benefit dental programs and services across the country because we are not alone in challenges around dental. So with that, um, I might just turn it over to Mary just to briefly kind of explain the DTI. Sure. So, so Mary Campbell, DHCS. So just briefly, we do have four different areas in the DTI where money will be focused, and it really is all money that's going to go to providers who are participating in the program and for achieving various elements that are in the domains. The domains are focused first on preventive services, so increasing the number of children receiving preventive services. This is linked to our statewide goal of increasing that by 10 percentage points over the next five years, and so we'll, uh, funding will be available to providers if they're able to achieve their own benchmark in increasing the number of preventive services they're providing. We also have a program that is linked to a particular risk management tool and then an implementation plan for the services that children would need in order to prevent cavities and again incentive payments for participating in that. Uh, the third is really related to continuity of care. You know, we, we talk a lot on the medical side about needing a primary medical home, uh, but that's also true on the dental side that someone needs a place where they can go year after year and so again incentive payments available to providers who are able to show that they're seeing children year after year and really serving as their primary uh, dental home. And then finally the last piece will fund uh, local dental pilots where the community will come together to figure out what, is it, what makes sense for them to test in trying to increase the, the preventive services and increase the continuity of care and propose to us what they would like to do and we'd be able to fund that through the waiver. So we're still working through the details of all of these and certainly engaging with, with Dr. Kumar as well as our stakeholders to figure out how do we make sure that these are structured in a way that makes the most sense and will have the most impact. Thank you. Uh, committee questions? Uh, you know, I'd ask one, uh, Director Kent, you mentioned that you, the department agreed with, I think you said, 23 out of the 24 audit findings. Uh, what was the one uh, where there was disagreement? Um, if I'm recalling correctly, it was on um, ratios and that they wanted to set us a, wanted to set a specific ratio of provider to patients. Um, in a fee-for-service environment, that's just not really a, a practical thing that you can readily calculate. In a managed care environment, when you know how many providers are contracting with the plan and the plan has the ability to assign beneficiaries to a provider, ratios make more sense. In a fee-for-service environment in which patients can um, see any doctor that's willing to take them, it's, it's a far harder thing to both measure, and so we disagreed with that one finding. Got it. Uh, thank you. I um, am interested in um, always the same question, how do we address, you know, access barriers, in particular for children, but I do think a, a good point was raised uh, also for uh, older Californians. Um, if any of you want to address it, including Dr. Kumar, if you want an opportunity to address any of these. Sure. Um, maybe I'll start, and then Dr. Yeah. Kumar can certainly talk to this. I think that... Um, there is no magic um, single element that um, automatically increases access. And what we have said um, 
all along is that um, there's barriers both from a provider participation standpoint in terms of administrative barriers. There are certainly rate issues. Um, sometimes it's a matter of having providers be in the right location. We have counties um, in which we have done outreach to providers and there's either simply not you know, providers that are willing to participate. Um, and so we've had to deploy mobile resources. And so, you know, the, um, the retroactive and the restoration of the AB 97 rates is certainly one um, solution that we think was appropriate and we believe will have an impact on utilization. But we also would point to the fact that we are doing some activity around streamlining our application for providers that want to participate but don't want to go through the application process because they find it to be burdensome. I think we also um, recognize that for a lot of families, getting to a dentist is really difficult, especially if you're working one, two or three jobs. And so the availability and accessibility of appointments um, for providers that may not work on the weekends or may not have late evening types of um, accommodation for schedules is certainly a barrier. And so what one of the items that we are really interested to kind of test and see in these pilots um, we do not get credit today for any of the dental visits that are in um, provided in um, federally qualified health centers because they're not in Dentical. So they bill us um, for a dental encounter, but through a very different system. And we know um, that, that there is a lot of dental care that's actually being provided through our FQHC ne network, which is really robust in the state of California. And yet all of that utilization is not captured in our utilization numbers. And so what we're really hoping to do on these pilot bases is really try to both um, find out what that looks like in terms of um, utilization and access, and then try to marry what's happening on that side with what's also happening on the Denical side. And then um, obviously for parents, the younger you can get children in um, for dental preventive care, um, that will ease the need for re um, restoration and restorative work on the back end. And so that is definitely, I know, Dr. Kumar's focus, which is to the extent that you can prevent um, disease from happening in children earlier on, um, it certainly leads to healthier um, teeth in, in adulthood. And so with that, I think there's, again, a lot of different targeted interventions that we're looking at, and not one single element is, is going to be the secret to success. Would you also speak to um, the recommendations in a little Hoover Commission report? And I'm looking at a number of them. And it, to me, they speak to what would be the department and the governor's vision for providing quality dental care and promoting good overall health. Um, is the idea that we will be um, uh, complying with the recommendations of the commission? Um, I think that we're still looking at the recommendations. Um, I would um, draw your attention to a bill um, number escapes me. Um, it is by the chair of the health committee, Dr. Wood, that we are working with him on um, that we have been providing some pretty significant technical assistance on um, to help on some targeted areas of the dental program as it pertains to our contracting ability, our ability to make changes in the program in a more rapid manner in terms of um, changes to benefit structure, removal of um, treatment authorization requests. Um, for example, we removed the x-ray requirement for um, dentists to have to submit x-rays prior to being um, authorized to do restorative work. So there's a lot of um, administrative things that the audit pointed out to us that we needed to be more nimble in being able to change as a department. And so we're working on that legislation. And I'm sorry that the number is, is blanking on me. 2207. 2207. Um, and so I think that um, to the extent that there are other items that we believe um, statutory changes are needed that are encapsulated in the um, Little Hoover Commission report, we certainly will be willing to work with Dr. Wood um, on those. But I think each one of them, um, some of them may be underway right now um, in terms of what we're doing um, and others may just, we may need a better conversation about what the recommendation was specifically um, asking us to do because a couple of them I have to admit I was, I was not quite clear on. So. So. Uh, Dr. Kumar, were you wanting to add something? Uh, yes, uh, I think California has uh, two great opportunities here. One is the Dental Transformation Initiative, and the other one is the State Oral Health Plan. Um, you know, this problem is uh, <clears throat> everywhere. Uh, I was in New York, and we had s similar problems. 
unfortunate dental visit is not all that uh, a pleasant experience. <laughs> so unless we make it very pleasurable, it's very difficult to reach, uh, you know, high dental visit rates. So in the um, uh, state oral health plan, the advisory committee has proposed five goals. Uh, we want, uh, the advisory committee wanted us to focus on determinants of health and promote healthy habits. Uh, most of the oral diseases are related to re uh, risk factors like tobacco, uh, sugar-sweetened beverages, alcohol, um, and oral hygiene and uh, dietary practices. So, as a, you know, in public health, we like to go upstream and focus on some of those aspects. Another one is uh, promoting community clinical linkage programs. These are, you know, linking patients to community resources as well as to clinicians. Because, um, you know, in what we find is even when patients are identified of having need, it's very difficult for, uh, to link them to a source of co uh, care and the no-show rate is very high. So it requires, you know, communication, improving health literacy. So the third goal is to focus on health literacy and uh, educate the public as well as the providers about risk factors and uh, best practices. And the last one is we want to set uh, clear objectives and develop a system to monitor progress towards those objectives. So those are some of the things that are. In. So we like, you know, in the uh, state oral health plan, we are uh, proposing that we address uh, the problems across the lifespan, including elderly uh, population. Thank you, and, and all good goals. I appreciate all the work on the determinants of health and the education and the literacy. Uh, I would still continue to say access continues to be a big issue, even with in conjunction with all of those things. But um, I'm going to take it on good authority that you're going to come up with a way to make the dental visit a, uh, an enjoyable one. Um, I got my doubts, uh, but nonetheless, I'm encouraged by your, uh, your vision. Uh, anything from finance uh, on issue 16? Anything from the LEO's office? Is there any public comment? Uh, seeing none, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kumar, Director Kent, Ms. Cantwell. We're going to move to uh, stakeholder issue uh, proposal, issue number 14, uh, California Children's Dental Disease Prevention Program. Uh, Eileen Espejo uh, from uh, Children Now. Uh, we look forward to hearing your presentation. Uh, and then we will close with one final issue after that, the Medi-Cal Dental Program Integrity Budget Change Proposal. Mrs. Spale. Thank you. We're ready. Uh, thank you, Chair Thurman and members of the subcommittee. I'm Eileen Espejo from Children Now and very pleased to be here today to propose restoration of the California Children's Dental Disease Prevention Program. As detailed in the background materials, dental disease, more specifically tooth decay, is the most chronic health problem among children in California. It is also one of the top reasons why they miss school. In 2007, more than half a million of California school-aged children missed at least one day due to a dental problem, amounting to a total of 874,000 missed school days. And that amounted to an average loss of nearly $30 million in attendance-based school district funding. The California Children's Dental Disease Prevention Program, CCDDPP, helped to improve the health of California's underserved kids. Until its suspension in 2009, the program provided evidence-based oral health preventive services, such as fluoride varnishes and dental sealants, to hundreds of thousands of children, preschool through sixth grade, right in their own school, schools with at least 50% free or reduced school lunch eligibility throughout 32 counties. Back when this program was signed into law by Governor Brown in 1995, the legislature had said then that they found 95% of all children in California had dental disease. It recognized then that dental disease in childhood can and does result in significant lifetime disability, dental pain, missing teeth, and the need for dentures. Back then, the cost of treating the results of dental disease, again, when this program was signed into law, was that um, the cost of treating the results of dental disease was close to $2 billion per year in California, of which approximately $100 million was paid by Dentical for treatment costs alone. Since the program suspension, Children Now has heard from former coordinators of the program to learn how this loss has affected their operations. While some counties have been able to partially continue services, several counties have just not been able to continue the program to do anything. 
compounded by access to services as detailed by the recent audits conducted by the California State Auditor and the Office of the Inspector, Inspector General from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the just released Little Hoover Commission report on Dentical, we believe the need for services is greater than ever before. And this lack of an infrastructure to effectively address need and deliver services comes at a time when you've just heard from Dr. Jay Kumar, who is developing a state oral health plan, but for which county public health departments may not have the infrastructure to even deliver these needed services once the plan is complete. Um, further, we believe that CCDPP will help save the state money, of course, through preventive services and make California more attractive to future grants. We had heard that um, California had once tried to apply for CDC funding, and at the time we didn't have a dental director, nor did we have a school-based sealant program, and therefore California was just passed up for federal grants. So on behalf of, on, for all of those reasons, on behalf of the several stakeholders who support restoration of the program, we hope that this committee will consider restoration to the dental disease prevention program. Thank you. Anything from finance? Anything from the LAO's office? Any committee questions? Public comment, one minute each. Kathy Dressler from the Children's Partnership in strong support of this item. Thank you. Janice Canallan, Children's Defense Fund in strong support. Thank you. Lynn Silver, Public Health Institute in strong support. We had more than a dozen kids a day in my county getting general anesthesia for rotten teeth and we need to prevent it. Thank you. Thank you. Tam Ma with Health Access and Strong Support and also just wanted to note that this program was eliminated for fiscal and not any kind of policy reasons and we think it's time to restore this program. Thank you. Good afternoon, Brianna Pittman, California Dental Association. Um, so the CDA absolutely believes in school-based um, prevention and sealant programs. We just want to make sure that they're done as part of a coordinated and comprehensive statewide approach, which we'll be having coming out very soon um, from the Department of Public Health. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty in support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speo. We're not taking action on the proposal today, but we appreciate you really framing uh, the importance of the issue and the urgency for our, our kids. And uh, I don't know if it means anything, but uh, the fact that this was uh, initially authorized uh, by then Governor Brown, um, I can't make any predictions, but we sure hope that bodes well for uh, your request. So thank, <laughs> thank you. you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to our final issue, uh, issue 17, the Medi-Cal uh, Dental Program Integrity Budget Change Proposal. Welcome, Ms. Cantwell. Thank you very much. So we have a proposal for four permanent positions to help us with the workload associated with implementing the recommendations of the California State Audit. Would you like to say any more? That was brief. That, that, we, we appreciate brevity. You know, you know you, <laughs> We appreciate, the committee appreciates brevity. Um, anything uh, from finance, anything from the LEO's office. Committee questions, public comment, one minute each speaker. Uh, Brianna Pittman, California Dental Association, very much in support. We know that DHCS is doing a lot of work on the Dental Cal program. They've been doing it. They've been very committed and want to make sure that they have the resources to do all the work that is um, to be found in the DTI. Uh, it's being highlighted in the Little Hoover Commission report and coming out of the state oral health plan. Thank you. Hi again, Eileen Espejo from Children Now. We also support this BCP. Um, we've also heard that um, DHCS believes that the medical managed care organizations are responsible for care coordination or case management for children, even in a dental fee for service system. So we would encourage that some of these contracts, that the medical contracts are actually um, also um, have some monitoring and oversight with regards to case management services that should be provided to the children enrolled in fee for service system. Thank you. Kathy Dressler from the Children's Partnership in support of this budget change proposal. Thanks. Thank you. Janice Canal and Children's Defense Fund in support of this budget change. Thank you. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty also in support. Thank you. Tam Law with Health Access and Support. Thank you. I want to thank all of the speakers today, thank all of our presenters, the various departments, our staff, and of course the members of the committee. Thank you for a rigorous discussion about public health and our dental health. This meeting is adjourned.